did you guys know that in Endgame, when the Hulk got possession of the, the Infinity Gauntlet and he was trying to snap, right? The reason he struggled to snap, the reason it was impossible for him to snap and he couldn't, he couldn't get the snap. Ah, he couldn't get the snap until he did. And the reason Tony could snap really easily, like he's not as strong as the Hulk, but he can snap really easily. You know, Bruce Banner, the Hulk, he was trying to bring back Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, with the snap. But, but, the stone, the soul stone, was acquired using the sacrifice of Natasha. So, the reason he struggled was because the stones were fighting against him snapping. Because think about it, it's pretty much the grandfather paradox. If, if, if Natasha is alive then how would they have got the stone in the first place to snap? So what the Hulk was in essentially trying to do was he was trying to he was trying to go against the force of nature, literally the force of nature, the force of continuity itself. And and he he I guess he used his 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 brute strength to overpower it because he actually clicked. Then again, the stones are made of gamma radiation. They emit gamma and so does the Hulk. So maybe that connection made it a lot easier. But yeah, I just I just thought that was a, a great way to start this video. I think this is part six. I think this is part six. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope I caught you doing well. I hope you're tired and I hope you're ready because these facts is crazy. I, I know you saw the time on this video. It's not the normal 20 minutes. That it, it normally is. I know you see the time, and I hope you're. I hope you're excited. Now, if you if you get too excited, then yo, like that's 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 just chill out. <laughs> but I'm back. This this facts video, right? As you can see, it's a lot longer now. What I normally do with my facts videos is I get a, a bunch of facts and I pick my favorite ones. And when I'm editing, I pick my favorite ones and I put my favorite ones at the beginning of the video and my least favorite ones at the end, which means that as you guys are sleeping, you guys probably won't hear the facts at the end, but it's cool because you've already heard the good ones, right? Now, this one, this facts video is different. I'm just going to be seeing it. We're just going to be seeing it together and reading all of these facts. I'm going to be seeing it with you guys for, I don't know, maybe an hour. And that's, and that's, that's wonderful. I love being with you guys. So we're just going to be sitting here with each other in the most relaxing way possible. And we're just going to be reading some crazy random facts. And I hope you guys enjoy. So like I said, if, if you guys find yourself drifting off, that's absolutely fine. You can drift off. But what I do want you guys to do is always come back to this video and try to finish it. So however long it is, let's say it's an hour long, try to finish the hour. Let's say one night you can only watch 20 minutes and then you sleep. Okay, cool. The next night, watch another 20 minutes. The next night, finish the video. Do you know what I'm saying? Because these facts, you can you can get some of the best facts at the very end of the video. Because like I said, I'm not going to edit this, this in the way I would normally edit. And yeah, man, some of these facts are, well, a lot of these facts are pretty good. This is a new website that I'm using in 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 comparison to my original website here are some hand sounds that's enough of that but without further ado i am going to sit here with you guys and get through as many facts as possible and you guys all i want for you guys know exactly what i need from you before you sleep give the video a thumbs up give me that thumbs up Maybe if you're feeling like it, drop a comment for the algorithm. I hope you guys like the new thumbnail style. And let's get into this. Dig this. Dead skin cells are the main ingredient in household dust. Funnily enough, the other day I was cleaning my room and it was hella dusty. And it got me thinking, because I, I knew this fact before, everyone knows that, you know, we're, we're made of dust, right? Or not made of dust, but, you know, what the fuck is dust, bro? Like, what? Dust, that, that the concept of dust is kind of crazy. But anyway, everyone knows that we're made of dust, right? So it got me thinking when I was cleaning my room and I was getting mad. I was like, damn, my room 
room's so dusty, everything's so dusty, you're like, a dusty room is a sign of life. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not advocating for you to be a dirty person. Clean your room. But I'm just saying, when you start to get frustrated at the, the sheer amount of dust in your room, maybe all over your house, maybe your car, but especially your room, you will laugh. <laughs> That's a factor. Hey, it's a fact, literally. I dig this one. World's oldest wooden wheel has been around for more than 5,000 years. It was found in 2002, approximately 12 miles south of some place, the capital of Slovenia. Slovenia, I swear, Slovenia was like where vampires are from and stuff. Slovenia, Pennsylvania, Trans, 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 Transvenia, Transor. Some place, it's not Slovenia, but it's trans something. Okay, cool. And now it's housed in the city's museum. Radiocarbon dating was used to determine that the wheel's age was around 5,100 and 5,350 years old. Closer to home. Okay, cool. That's a fact. Listen, I was watching Game of Thrones no 10 years ago when everyone was watching Game of Thrones. I was not watching Game of Thrones. I don't remember what I was doing, but I think it involved playing basketball. I was a basketball guy 10 years ago, right? But I was watching Game of Thrones and I got to season, to season, what, season 5? And no spoilers, so if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, then this would probably be a bit of a spoiler, but, well, in episode 1 it happens anyway. So Bran, he's disabled, right? He can't use his feet. His feet are fucked, right? Cool. For the longest time, up until season 5, I think, Hodor and his friends, you know, his, his brother and the girl, you know, Mira, people would carry Bran around. They'd also use um, a wheelbarrow to barrow Bran around. And that makes sense. That's logical, right? But, like, in season 5 or 6, one of the seasons, all of a sudden, Bran turns into Professor X and he begins wheeling around in a wheelchair and it got me thinking because I was like you know when you're really into a series you know and the series is set back in the day you're like okay cool I see all of this olden day stuff around and that's cool and I see dragons and I see towers and I see basically olden day stuff and that's cool but then when I saw the wheelchair for some reason it it was like it's as if like it took me out of the moment it's as if like I saw I saw something very very 21st century so it looked very out of place and it got me thinking like did they have wheelchairs back in the day before I turned on this camera I probably should have researched it like you know when was Game of Thrones supposed to be you know around what time in history was Game of Thrones you know started and then what 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 were wheelchairs saying basically like what was what was the deal like what was up with wheelchairs because if it all adds up, then hey, it all adds up. But I'm just saying, when I was watching that that episode, when it first got introduced, I was like, damn, like, what? where did he get this from? Dig this, this, I don't know if this is true, but dig this. The Philippines consists of 7,641 islands. The Philippines is an archipelago archipelago which means that it's made up of a group of islands 7,641 to be exact the figure does not include the thousands of sandbars and other landforms that emerge during low tide the philippines from from what i remember about geography is not that huge probably not bigger than china right so how does it have this many islands i mean a place like africa you know, because Africa's like your whole continent. So being that big, you could expect, if, if you were to say, look, there are 7,000 islands or there's 7,000 rivers or there's 7,000 whatever, somewhere that big like Africa, you can be like, okay, cool, that would make sense. That's consistent. But the Philippines doesn't seem to add up. Speaking of which, speaking of, you know, size and stuff like that, you know, you know, India and China, if you look at them on a the map, they're part of the continent 
of Asia, right? And India and China are not like, they're not like a Russia. So if you look at Russia on a map, you, you see the sheer size of it. Or you look at somewhere like Africa, you see the sheer size of it. But you look at India and China and you're not like, rah, this is, this is pretty massive. But, but, each of those countries that I just mentioned, India and China, have over 1 billion people in their countries respectively. I, I swear there's only like 7 or 8 billion people in the world. But one billion, over 1 billion of them are in India and 1 billion of them are in China. Do you know how crazy that is? Quite literally, everywhere you look, you're probably going to run into someone. You know, being in a, such a confined area and there being so many people. That's insane. Dig this one. There's enough gold inside Earth to coat the planet. First of all, the Earth itself is massive not compared to stuff like the sun and other extraterrestrial you know planets and stuff but the earth itself is massive right you're telling me there's enough gold speaking of gold right i was watching a movie quite recently and in this movie there were a bunch of you know gold plates not gold plates but gold bars i should say you know those cuboid of cuboids of gold like this and they're pretty heavy you know i did my research after the movie because i was very curious and it turns out that the average bar of gold is worth around 25 g's 25k 25 dollars 25 25 k 25 g's so 25 thousand dollars or 25 thousand pounds or whatever now if if i were to just look at a piece of gold I'll just look at a piece of gold very objectively. I was just looking at it for what it was. I would have no idea that it's it's valuable at all. If I gave a piece of gold to like a baby or something, the baby would look at it and try to eat it probably, but the baby would not see value in the gold. And if I wasn't if I wasn't uh, privy to how how valuable and expensive gold is, I wouldn't look at it objectively and be like, you know what, this is very valuable. I guess it's rarity, the gold being quite rare, makes it valuable. So let's say I had a bar of gold, a cuboid of gold, and I gave it to someone like a gold, like a pawn, a pawn broker. And he was like, yo, I'm going to give you £25,000 for this. First of all, let's say he gave me the money in my hand like this, and it was stacked up like this in 50s, and it was stacked up. This, all of this is just paper. To me the money i know it's valuable but it's just paper to me at the moment but then let's say i use that twenty-five thousand pounds to buy my dream car let's say i bought a mercedes or a beamer bmw now that i can look at that and be like yo this is a valuable my guy like i love this car this is my dream car and this is pretty cool how can so my question in, in me saying this, I'm trying to say like, how can something of so little value to me bring me something that has a lot of value to me? It just shows that value itself, the, the, the objectivity of value is very subjective. I don't value a bar of gold. It'll be sitting on my table doing absolutely nothing. I don't need it. I also don't value the money. Like if I just had a bunch of money in my hand, I don't value that. But what money can buy me, what the gold can get me is valuable to me. I can get something valuable to me. There's there's a shift of value. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling. But I hope you guys get why what I was trying to say with that. I find that pretty interesting take this human beings can use only a small fraction of earth's water Duh. in school we were taught the most that most specifically 71 percent of the earth's planet surface is covered in water while this is true humans can only use 0.007 percent of that water according to national geographic that's because there's only about 2.5 percent of earth's water that is fresh water and only one percent that is accessible the rest is made up of glaciers and snowfields. 
hear me out if if you're a scientist and you're watching this hear me out i've seen episodes of the big bang theory where the crew basically went to the antarctic and they did research in in was it antarctica or the arctic one of them you know the icy places up and down they went to one of them in it speaking of which like yo did you guys realize that there are some places on this planet that we all share that we cannot go how weird is that like area 51 if you ever came across area 51 and you tried to go into area 51 you'd get shot up like like the government or the people there would 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 harm you for trying to go to see what was there it's kind of crazy but anyway you you the governments and the scientists you have access to all of this ice it, it, hey, hey, I'm just saying The fact literally just said The rest makes up glaciers and snowfields And only 1% is accessible Well then go access that shit bruh Go, go, go to the Arctic Go to Antarctica Get some, get some, get some Get like a little microwave, yeah And put, put a bunch of ice in a microwave Turn it on for about uh, 30 seconds 30 seconds to a minute It'll melt into water Ta-da, you're done I'm just saying I'm innovative man Listen if a scientist is watching this Comment down below and tell me how good my idea was Okay <laughs> Oh my gosh Dig this strange fact right here It takes A drop of water 90 days to travel The entire Mississippi River Spanning 2340 miles the Mississippi River River is the third largest I cannot speak largest watershed in the world that's one long stretch of water so long in fact that it takes one drop of water approximately 90 days to travel its entire length okay one drop of water I'm curious I you know some of these facts the way the way people the way people word them I feel like they word them in a way to make them seem more enticing because I say that to say yo there's no way to actually tell how, like the journey of one drop of water I guess what they did was discover the cadence of the the, the Mississippi River discovered the cadence of it and then they knew the length of it so they could also calculate the time in which it would take to travel the whole thing but this was worded in a way it takes one drop of water like like there's a camera there's a camera the size of one drop of water and they put it on a drop of water's head and not, it was just on a drop of water's head and it was just going round and going and going and going, going. and 90 days later <sighs> come on man I get it though like the reason I even read this fact is because it was worded in such a way so good job dig this japan has one vending machine for every 40 people japan is thought to have the highest one of the highest densities of vending machines in the world and one for every 40 people in the country while most sell various items like beverages others feature ice cream noodles and disposable cameras again okay so japan i don't know how many people are in japan and i don't think it's as dense as china one for every 40 people so let's say let's say this well i was gonna say that that's pretty that's pretty much a big number but i can't actually one for every 40 yeah, I can't actually tell. So let's try to scale it. Let's let's you and me try to scale it. If it's one for every forty, well, then it's ten for every four hundred, and it's a hundred for every four thousand, and it's a thousand for every forty thousand. So every forty thousand people, there's a thousand vending machines. There's ten thousand for every four hundred thousand, and there's one hundred thousand for every four million. Did I get that right? And if I did, then that is a lot of vending machines. Let's just assume that there's 4 million people in Japan. 100,000 vending machines. That's a bit much, bruh. They're selling, they're selling, what, beverages, ice cream, noodles, and disposable cameras. The disposable cameras.
cameras I get, you know. Japan is a tourist attraction and whatnot, and you want a disposable camera around every corner because you need to take pictures of the art and the beauty and the stuff, right? But damn, like a hundred thousand fucking vending machines. <laughs> That's a lot of vending machines, bro. That's a lot of power. Dig this one. Did you guys know that lemons float but limes sink? Strange. Because limes are denser than lemons, they drop to the bottom of the glass while lemons float at the top. Out of all these random fun facts, this one's been at the front of our faces, or rather in our glasses. Uh, what, what company is this? They're trying to make jokes. I'm the one making jokes here. So that wasn't very funny, but we move. Check out these. Okay, shut up. What did they say? They said lemons float, but limes sink. Hey, they say never judge a book by its cover. If I picked up a lemon and I picked up a lime, I'd be like, yo, these two are probably the same thing. You know, they're the same size. You know, they weigh kind of similar, you know, but one is seemingly more dense than another. Okay, let's, let's, let's think about it. Limes sink, so they're more dense and lemons float. In you guys' opinions, in your guys' opinions, your guys' what? Tastes worse, lemons or limes? In my opinion, it's a lime. And limes are the ones that sink, so does that mean, hey, we got asked a serious question, does that mean bad taste is heavier than good taste? And if so, if bad taste is heavier than good taste is lighter, then why is junk food which tastes good so bad for you? Yo, let's, let's. Hey, let's chill and let's think about that just for a second. You done? I'm done, dude. That's kind of crazy. Maybe it doesn't work like that. Maybe that's not the logic. Hey, I'm just saying. I don't know, though. That sounded pretty... Uh, I, I literally came to that conclusion right in front of you guys. Like, I, I dissected that pretty well. Seemingly to me, anyway. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Dig this strange fact right here McDonald's once made bubblegum flavoured broccoli this crazy McDonald's fact will have your taste buds crawling unsurprisingly the attempt to get kids to eat healthier did not go hold on hold on hold on so this is real McDonald's did that to get kids to eat healthier oh I, I don't, no, no, I can't believe that's true. Apparently kids were confused by the taste. No, 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 no. I can't believe that's true. I don't think McDonald's would do that. No, no, no. Listen, the intention, I support the intention. You know, you need kids to eat well. Kids nowadays are, even back in the day, they've been eating like, 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 you know, like trash for years. And it, and it, and it adds up over the years and then kids become, you know, but I'm saying like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it right now If I took a broccoli And I put it in my mouth And I started chewing it And it tastes like bubblegum Listen, wherever I got the broccoli from Whoever gave me that broccoli They're getting slapped Someone is getting is getting a stern Addressing What the, what was that? What was that? Because you're know, like Ew, that's crazy I'm spitting it out I'm chewing it up Spitting it out And, 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 and just 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 getting a cheeseburger and I'm eating the whole cheeseburger just to wash that nasty taste out of my mouth that's disgusting bye McDonald's kudos to you kudos 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 to you because that's that's you, you're you trying to get kids to eat better even though you guys don't even serve real food but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy <laughs> dig this the first oranges weren't orange the original oranges from Southeast Asia were tangerine pomelo hybrids and they were actually green. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but you know, an orange is only an orange. First of all, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the orange color, like the name orange, the color orange and the name for it. Oh, this is this color is orange or the orange fruit. And if an orange wasn't, okay, look, look at it like this. If an orange came first.
first, like the plant came first, but it was initially green. Why would it have been named orange if it was green? It would have been named something else because if the, the, the color orange already existed and you're naming an orange, an orange but it's green, then why would you name it orange? I believe that means that the, the fruit came first. So once the fruit turned into the color orange, they named it an orange. Orange juice is not better than apple juice, I can guarantee you that. And if you disagree with me, we can fight in the comment section because apple juice is superior. When you're drinking vodka, when you're drinking alcohol, orange juice is the best mixer. I will not lie, orange juice, ice and alcohol, that doesn't even taste like alcohol and you can get really drunk. Tip number one, if you want to get drunk, <laughs> if you want to get lit like Roscoe, lit like Roscoe, vodka, orange juice, ice, simple, take this, there's only one letter that does not appear in any US state name, can you guys guess what letter it is, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. okay, I, so I thought it was Z, but apparently it's not Z, <laughs> You'll find Z in Arizona, J in New Jersey, and even two X's in New Mexico, but there is no Q, Quebec, as in Canada, okay, cool. Q is the letter, lonely Q, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, B, Q, R, S, D, U, V, W, X, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, B, Q. You see Q, I think the reason is because Q is after you know when you recite the alphabet you start off normal a b c d e f g h i j k and then everyone does that really weird thing elemena 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 right and q is the second letter after that because p is after that elemena p and then q so i guess q can 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 go sit in the corner take this a cow bison hybrid so a cow bison hybrid is called a beefalo you can even buy its meat in at least 21 states hold on what the fuck yeah i thought this was a joke huh? <laughs> yo the way they drew this um if if i can find a picture that i'm looking at right now i'll put it on the screen but the way they the way they edited this picture is funny because i promise you a cow bison hybrid does not look like this it looks like a a minotaur, you don't know, half human, half horses, it's like a centaur, <laughs> a minotaur, but yeah, it looks like one of those, yes, that's ridiculous, yes, yes, I can definitely smell shite, dig this, Scotland has 421 words for snow, snow guys, snow, 421, some examples, oh my god, <laughs> some examples are Sneels, spelled S-N-E-E-L, S-N-E-E-S-L, and that means to start raining or snowing. Fleef, fleef, spelled F-E-E-F-L-E, to -E -E -E, swell. If the definition is to swell, how does that have anything to do with snow? Unless they're implying that snow swells. And the last word is... <laughs> yeah, this, this doesn't... This is not a real fact, it's not. But the last word is flink drinking. Flink drinking. And that means a light snow. <laughs> Yo, all my Scottish people watching this... I I love you guys, man. You guys make my life like so warm and cuddly. <laughs> That's hilarious. Put a smile on my face, just warm up my soul. You Scottish, you Scottish, you Scottish buggers up there. <laughs> Dig this one. Samsung tests its phone durability with a butt-shaped robot, like a like a like a butt-shaped robot. They stash their phones in their back pockets all the time people stash their phones in their back pockets all the time that's true 
which is why Samsung created a robot shaped like a butt to sit on phones to make sure that they can take the pressure. <laughs> Believe it or not, the robot even wears jeans. <laughs> You're like, these, these, these are engineers that come up with these all these innovative stuff and stuff like this they're really smart right but they also have senses of humor like they're also very funny people and that's that's it must be like really amazing to work at like tesla or samsung apple i'm not even certain but yeah i think apple's or i've seen a video of apple's um headquarters apple hq if you haven't seen that video on, on youtube right now you should you should watch it after this video you might be asleep right now but who knows but that video is pretty insane I think it costs like three, three or four trillion, no, three or four billion dollars to, to make. That's crazy. I said trillion. That's that's ridiculous. But working for these companies must be must be pretty funny. Dig this one. The Windy City nickname has nothing to do with Chicago's weather. That's interesting. Because back in the day when I used to watch basketball, my favorite player was well, my favorite two players was Kobe. R.I.P. Kobe and Derrick Rose and Derrick Rose made me fall in love with the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls was basically my my basketball team because I live in the UK, so I had to pick a team, right? And Derrick Rose made me support the Bulls, and they called him the Windy City Assassin. And so I I came to realize that Windy City was the nickname for Chicago. So let me just read this. If if you live in Chicago, you might already know that this random fact. You might already know this random fact, but we're betting most other people don't. Chicago's nickname was coined in the 19th century. Okay, was coined by 19th century journalists who were referring to the fact that its residents were windbags and full of hot air. Yo, if you live, if you're from Chicago, I'm... Hey, it wasn't me. I am, I'm just reading Don't Shoot the Messenger. But that's tough. That's, that's tough. Journalists would call you guys windbags and full of hot air. And they copped you guys the nickname The Windy City. Like they called your whole city windy. <laughs> that's pretty immature. Take this. Peanuts aren't technically nuts. They're legumes. According to Merriam-Webster, a nut is only a nut if it's hard-shelled dry fruit or seed with a separable, separable rind or shell and interior can. This means that walnuts, almond cashews and pistachios are nuts either their seeds. You know, I, you, gotta, you gotta find something better to do, man. Peanuts are nuts. <laughs> Walnuts are nuts. Almonds are nuts. Cashews are nuts. Pistachios, they're nuts. They, in this fact, right here, they call them seeds. Apparently, they're seeds. They're nuts. You're nuts for writing this. That's crazy. Dig this. Armadillo shells are bulletproof. Oh shit, this, this. Oh wow, an armadillo, okay. In fact, one Texas man was hospitalized when a bullet was shot at an armadillo, ricocheted off the animal and hit him in his jaw. Fucking hell. Your, your, your shell is bulletproof. Why would an armadillo... Well, okay. So like hedgehogs, when they're getting attacked, they, they, they curl up into the ball and it's spiky. So it doesn't really need to be, to be hard per se but the spikiness kind of wards off predators because they don't want to injure themselves and that's smart and you know turtles when they're being attacked they can just call up into their into their shells do armadillos they are bulletproof that's crazy crazy dig this strange fact firefighters use wetting agents to make water wetter chemicals reduce the surface tension of plain water so it's easier to spread and better and better soaks into objects which is why it's known as wet water wow that's pretty cool wow so they put chemicals in the water and it reduces the 
the surface tension of plain water so it's easier to spread you know you know surface tension in water there's a little experiment that you know they teach the kids of how surface tension works so you get just normal water and then you put like pepper you know black pepper you, the grinding thing you, you grind that onto the water onto the surface and you just look at it and it looks pretty normal but then you get like a, you get your finger and you put your you dip your finger in like soap and dish of soap and then when you when you put your finger into the water the surface tension breaks so the the black peppers they scatter around they kind of disperse like this uh to the corners trying to basically trying to avoid the the soap but then once you've done that because the soap breaks the surface tension there's no more surface tension so even if you do it again it's no longer gonna work you know when you brush your teeth and your your hand gets wet or let's say you're washing your face and your hand gets wet the water runs down your without without falling off it doesn't just drip off it runs down your entire hand and then it falls off when it comes to a natural stopping point that's basically what surface tension is and i guess firefighters have found a way to to combat that technically it doesn't make water wetter it just makes water more fluidy or technically wet the concept of wet is to wet something and and douse something in water or liquid so i guess it is wet water dig this some octopus species lay 50 six thousand eggs at a time on average a giant pacific octopus will lay fifty six thousand eggs at the end of pregnancy oh wait oh my god over the course of one month i thought that meant in its lifetime yeah but it does say fifty six thousand at a time lay them so i'm i'm pretty certain that you don't lay every single egg that you produce you only lay the ones that are fertilized so that that the octopus is probably producing i don't want to say a million but let's let's just say like three hundred thousand eggs hold on hold on hold on hold on so when the male octopus impregnates or fertilizes the eggs the males must shoot at least 56 thousand sperm cells at the eggs for them to be fertilized and okay yeah that makes sense because i was gonna say in humans like we only have one well women only have one eggs <laughs> in humans females only have one egg right so it doesn't matter how many um sperm get to the egg the only one egg that gets inside will fertilize it and then it's it's a wrap but I guess if you have multiple eggs and multiple sperm, then yeah, it makes sense. I was bugging for a second. I didn't realize what I was saying, but I get it. Dig this. Cats have fewer toes on their back paws. Like most four-legged mammals, cats have five toes on their front, but the back paw only have four toes. Oh, that's cute. Anyway... You know, if you didn't know this already, cats are scared of pickles. They're scared of cucumbers and pickles and gherkins and zucchinis. Anything that looks like a long green object, basically. And I guess they think that these objects are snakes. So when you put uh, like a, a cucumber behind uh, a cat and you let it just chill. Like let's say the cat's eating and you let the cucumber just chill on the floor. When the cat eventually turns around, it's going to get really spooked jumps up in the air and it does this really cool shit pickle rick was a good episode man dig this kleenex tissues were originally intended for gas masks okay so this is about world war one yeah we're just gonna move on from that it's a bit strange Gas mask, that's crazy. Take this. Blue whales can eat. Blue whales can eat half a million calories in one mouthful. calories what 
just try to wrap your brain around the second part of this animal fact. Those 457,000 calories are more than 240 times the energy used. The whale uses to scoop the food into its mouth. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The whale uses a bunch of energy to, 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 to eat the food, to scoop it into its mouth. And the food in its mouth is 240 times more. Oh. Yo, whales are massive. I mean, the earth is pretty big to house all of those whales. What the average human, like the average guy, 2,000 calories, 2,000 compared to what, half half a million calories in one mouthful i don't know how often whales eat maybe they're like you know snakes they eat like you know once every couple months and bears they eat and they hibernate but whales i don't know if they they eat and they chew their food and then they swallow it and then they do it again and calories whales are eating a lot of food that's why they're so big guys <laughs> dig this that tiny pocket in your jeans was designed to store pocket watches. The original jeans had only four pockets. That tiny pocket plus two more on the front and just one at the back. Okay, so I guess jeans are supposed to have two at the back. My jeans only have one at the back for my wallet and, and stuff. So that's four, that's three plus the one in the inside us anyway the tiny pocket in your jeans was designed to store pocket watches oh it's a pocket watch oh my god that makes sense a pocket watch where would you store your pocket watch in a pocket and they make a tiny pocket just for the watch that's pretty cool i like that fact take this i think i've said this before yeah i have but turkeys can blush now i remember saying in a previous facts video that that's pretty funny because a scientist or or you know a person chilling with turkeys must have tried to make the turkey blush so the, the, the person must have been flirting with the turkey they must have been they must have been saying kind of sweet little things to the turkey and they realized that the turkey was acting out of character acting a bit nervous so they, they came to the conclusion that the turkey was blushing that's that's hilarious i like that fact though dig this the man with the world's deepest voice can make sounds humans can't hear wow the man's name is tim storms and he can't what what? What? Okay, let me read it for what it says. The man, Tim Storms, can't even hear the note, which is the eighth, which is eight octaves below the lowest. Okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. So basically, this guy, his name is Tim Storms, and he can communicate with elephants, but he can't even hear himself when he's when he's saying stuff. What? <laughs> So the guy can't hear himself when he's talking at his, I don't know if it's his resting voice or he lowers his voice, but he can't hear himself because he's a human, but elephants can hear him. And I don't know how you would know that an elephant can hear you because if I said wagwan, if I said hello to an elephant, the elephant wouldn't respond to me by saying wagwan. So how would I know the elephant heard me and is acknowledging what I'm saying? Anyway, yeah, cool. Tim Storms, you're pretty, uh, you're pretty, you're pretty different. Dig this. Cows do not have upper front teeth. Cap, 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 cap. I've seen a cow's front teeth. I remember, like when I was a kid, a cow smiled at me. And I smiled back. And it had at least one tooth. <laughs> Yo, the cow had at least one one front tooth so don't 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 show show cows a bit of respect you know one tooth is upper front teeth when a baby gets his first tooth you're not gonna tell the baby hey, you have no teeth you're toothless that's that's pretty rude and disrespectful and not acknowledging like what you what you're
you're seeing the respect cows the respect cows you're this website i'm gonna report you respect <laughs> respect cows or, 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 or get punished dig this thanks to 3d printing nasa can basically email tools to astronauts now that this is a fact that is amazing thanks to 3d printing nasa can basically email tools to astronauts basically they'll send them the not the coordinates but they'll send them the instructions of how to the code of what they would need to do something and then the machine would print that is amazing getting new equipment to the space station used to take months or years but the new technology means that the tools will be ready within hours Sp that's amazing <sighs> consider this with me right there's there's a, a robot on mars called the mars rover and mars is for so 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 far away cool how I'm, I, obviously there's an answer to this question but I don't know the answer and I haven't researched it and I might research it after the video but I'm asking you guys how does the Mars rover send messages to Earth let's say it takes a picture of what it's seeing to send a message you need signal right I guess maybe there's a satellite near Mars but I doubt that I also I doubt that so how does the Mars rover send a signal all the way to Earth? Maybe it is to do with satellites. It must be. Obviously, everything is to do with satellites. Anything signal related is satellite related, right? But here's the question. What is the closest satellite to Mars that humans have access to? And if, listen, if there's one right above Mars, then I take back everything I said. But I don't think so. And that's pretty cool. Take this. Only a quarter of the Sahara Desert is actually sandy. Most of it is covered in gravel. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. That, that makes me, because, you know, I have a picture of what the Sahara Desert looks like in my head. Even though I don't really see many pictures of it. And I've never been there myself, but, you know. I have uh, an idea of what it is in my head. It's basically, what 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 game is that? Journey, the PS2 game Journey. You know that amazingly beautiful game. I just imagine something like that, but it's all sand. That's how I picture the Sahara Desert. Don't tell me it's gravel. Like it's mostly gravel because that's kind of that's kind of ass. Yeah, I don't like that. That's not a fact to me. Dig this. Bananas grow upside down. Okay. Dig this. There were active volcanoes on the moon when dinosaurs were alive. Interesting. Most of the volcanoes probably stopped erupting about a billion years ago. But NASA... But NASA findings have suggested that there might have been active lava flow 100 million years ago when dinosaurs were still roaming that is yo on the moon i wonder what did happen to said volcanoes i wonder how deep the volcanoes were when i say deep i mean re i really mean how tall they were because the moon the moon surface when you look at it is it's not it's not very jagged so it's not like there's a there's a skyscraper on the moon or there's something really elevated off the moon surface i think it's mostly level it's mostly the level is mostly consistent with its divots you know i think the moon has collided with a few as um, asteroids and comics over the years so it has divots and it has you know dents but i don't think anything's very elevated like a built structure so I wonder what happened to the volcanoes and how tall were they and when they stopped erupting like what happened when they went to when they went to the moon in 1960 flipping nine gap when they went to the moon did they did they find volcanoes maybe they're on the dark side of the moon apparently there's no there's no there's no oxygen on the moon anyway I don't 
that's why they have to wear that flipping oh apparently the light side of the moon is oxygen rich and the dark side of the moon is not it's all it's all screwy to me <laughs> dig this one dogs sniff good smells with their left nostril this is a good fact dogs normally start sniffing with their right nostril then keep it there if the smell could make signal danger but they'll shift from left what oh but they'll shift to the left for something pleasant like food or mating partner if you're a dog lover yeah shut up but hey if if your dog is sniffing you always look at the nostril it's using to sniff you because dogs have really sensitive noses right so it's a good indicator that you you might need to take a shower if the dog is sniffing you with its left or no with its right nostril and if it is left nostril then you probably took a shower but what what is a bad smell to a dog technically because you know i was watching monsters incorporated and you know the monsters they they have something called odorants we have deodorants which makes us smell better and get rid of bad smells but monsters they have the opposite they have odorants so they 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 want to smell bad and one of the one of the fragrances <laughs> one of the fragrances that sully had in his locker was wet dog so monsters they want to smell like wet dog so to a monster you smell good when you smell bad and I guess if you're really clean, you smell bad to a monster. I don't even know how that works, but I'm saying to a dog, what smells bad? So my advice about if your if your dog is smelling you with its right with its right nostril, then you might need to take a shower. That could be wrong because I don't know what dogs like and what they do not. Now, obviously, if you smell like dog food, hey, I'm right. No, no, no I'm right. 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 If you smell like dog food, that's not a bad. That's not a good smell. And they're gonna be sniffing you with their left nostril because they like that. So, I guess that answers the question. I think that that was a good point to stop. I hope you guys are asleep by now. But like I said at the beginning, I also hope that you guys watch all of these facts because they're all good. And I didn't, I didn't order them from my favorites to least favorite like I normally do. So which means like you can really get like the best fact right at the end. Who knows? Do you know what I'm saying? So anyway, hand sounds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be prepared to be ready for the next one in store. Cause you know I'm definitely gonna finish the facts on this website. I think I'm like halfway through. So 